Hello, my name is Taras Minkowski and today I'm going to talk to you about architecting internal developer platforms with Backstage and Humanitech. I'm, I'm CEO of, of a company called Frontsight. Uh, we are a consulting company that specializes in helping uh, organizations build their internal developer platforms and improve the developer experience of, of their internal developer platforms with Backstage and Humanitech. Um, we're seeing a lot of companies adopt Backstage uh, in an effort to help improve the developer experience of the internal developer platforms. Um, they typically work with their platform partners um, to, to create a single glass pane, um, but uh, Backstage is only one part of the internal developer platform. An internal developer platform consists of all the, piece of the, all the technology um, and software that a developer has to use in the process of doing their work. So that typically includes a version control system that they use to push code, their continuous integration pipelines that they use to um, build their build container images, um, they push these into container registries, uh, they provision infrastructure necessary to run their workloads, um, they, create, they um, use continuous delivery pipelines to uh, build to deliver their workloads um, to Kubernetes, um, and typically uh, they'll have observation mechanisms in place to uh, um, absorb, obs observe the run, um, runtime execution of their of their workloads uh, in the cloud. Um, and uh, a lot of these things are are visible. They're uh, they're exposed in the developer portal um, with uh, with Backstage. Um, Internal develop platforms quite often consist of a combination of homegrown tools um, that organizations are trying to replace with uh, industry standards and industry standards that they are already adopting. Um, and so because so many of the tools that are being used are shared across different organizations, um, even though the combination of these tools is unique, it can be difficult to, to know um, how an internal develop platform is doing. Um, it, and so uh, in the process of, of, of looking at different internal develop platforms for different organizations, we found that there is a simple litmus test that you can use to check um, the, the um, capability of an internal develop platform. So the test that we apply is, uh, is to look at a use case of um, a developer trying to create a a new service um, and with the expectation that that service will automatically deploy to a development environment uh, using the organization's best practices. And so when we use this, um, this exercise to assess internal developer platforms, we typically find that there are two kinds of internal developer platforms. Uh, there are those that are uh, create, that we call static and some that are dynamic. Um, um, the most common ones are the static control developer platforms. These, um, these treat provisioning and deployment as two separate processes. They uh, usually have configurations that are, that are uh, one set of configurations for provisioning and a different set of configurations for deployment. Um, and um, these tools typically, or these internal developer platforms, uh, typically do not provide a way to express dependencies between, uh, between the infrastructure and the workloads. Um, in other words, you could say that, you know, for example, if you have a, um, a service that needs a database, you can use a Helm chart um, to, uh, w you know, with some, uh, some template values that you could specify uh, database credentials. Um, but it is up to the developer to ensure that those database database cred credentials are wired into the um, or provided into the workload, um, and um, all of the database provisioning has to be done before the de deployment actually happens, and all the secrets have to be configured before the deployment start before the workload starts. Um, the separation between uh, provisioning and deployment introduces um, a lot of friction into the developer experience because developers have to learn different tools um, before they can deploy their workloads. Um, uh, and they also need to know how to provision the infrastructure. And typically this looks like, you know, the developers using learning Terraform uh, for provisioning, uh, maybe Terragrunt, 
uh, and uh, using Helm charts for, uh, for deployment. Learning these new tools could be a high barrier for a developer who just wants to deploy a service. Um, and um, automating provisioning on static internal develop platforms can be a challenge as well because, um, because a developer who is tasked with creating a template that is going to be used to execute, uh, to, to do the provisioning um, of the service and, and its dependencies is has to think about the provisioning and have to handle the fail cases of provisioning failing. So, um, in you know, for example, what, what could happen is the, the provisioning is successful, but the deployment fails, and now you have a, a workload that is not running, but the provisioning has been completed. So, uh, someone who is creating a template that is um, automating creation of services, they have to consider what happens when deployment fails, even though provisioning is successful. And it's being in this, in this state um, and recovering from the state gracefully can be difficult. Um, these challenges are a lot simpler on dynamic internal developer platforms um, because dynamic internal developer platforms treat provisioning and deployment as a, a unified concept. They're, they're two, two pieces of the same process. And uh, typically, they generate configuration for provisioning and for deployment from a, the same set of configuration. Um, and this gives them the ability to um, explicitly uh, express dependencies. Um, this is something you typically see in, in dynamic internal developer platforms. Uh, they provide developers with a way to say that my service or my workload needs a specific infrastructure resource and be, by explicitly specifying that dependency the system can use its configurations and can generate configurations that will um, automatically provision the necessary resources. Um, this, these kind of uh, dynamic control developed platforms typically have a much lower barrier to entry because they are um, they usually take care of generating configuration for provisioning and the workloads. Um, they do not require developers to learn Terraform and Helm charts to do to um, to deploy their services. Um, and this also makes it much easier to automate because um, typically dynamic internal development platforms provide an API that um, someone who is writing a template that is going to automate a creation of a service and its necessary deploy, uh, its necessary resources. Um, usually, that a dynamic control develop platform will provide an API um, that will be responsible for generating the configuration and then also uh, orchestrating the provisioning and deployment to make sure that all of the um, um, all of the resources are created and all of the services are deployed. Um, and um, I would like to show you what one of these systems, um, what, an, what a dynamic control developer platform using backstaging, and uh, I will, I'm going to use Humanitech here because Humanitech is an, is an excellent example of a, uh, a platform orchestrator that could be used to orchestrate um, and provide, orchestrate as part of a dynamic control developer platform. So the use case that I'm going to show you is going to be the um, developer experience of creating a new service that will um, automatically de deploy uh, to a development environment uh, using the organization's best practices. So what I have here is a backstage instance that is um, configured and it has um, Humanitech integrated. And so for us to be able to, so for a developer to be able to create a new component or a new service, they can go here to create and they see their template. So this template um, was created, uh, we created previously. So we're gonna choose this template. So this is a standard microservice template. 
Now the developer needs to specify a name um, for, for their component. So it's going to be, I'm going to call it my uh, microservice. And um, I'm going to specify the organization where that microservice is going to be deployed and the name of the repository where the microservice is going to be running. Um, I'm going to call it my microservice today. There we go. So let's run next. So now we're going to create the microservice. So what we're going to what what it's going to do is it's going to we could we, we could see what it's doing. So it's it's um, taking that the template of the of the project. So the source code. It's um, applying um, parameters to that template. Um, then it generates the files and pushes those files into GitHub. And then it creates a, a configures our orchestrator, so it configures Humanitech, um, and applies the um, configurations necessary to deploy the service. And then lastly, it, re it registers the component with Backstage. So now, uh, when we go into our catalog, we we have my microservice today, and what we could see here on the right side, we could see the um, the integration with Humanitech. Um, and we could see that it's actually attempting to deploy the workload as we speak. Um, so we can, uh, we'll, we'll come back to this and we'll watch this. It's actually um, already provisioned all the necessary resources, including, um, including creating a, uh, an ingress um, uh, resource. Um, and um, let's, uh, let's look at what, while it's deploying, let's look at what, it, what was actually generated. So we have a better idea of what what it's actually doing. So we so this is the uh, repository um, of the code that was generated um, from the template. So we have a Docker file. So this Docker file represents the actual. So this is the actual application. So in this case, we're just using an existing application and uh, our, our existing image um, potting for image. We're going to just build that as our workload and. Um, as part of this workload, what we uh, we oh, sorry as part of this um, configuration of the service, we created a GitHub Actions workflow. So this GitHub Actions workflow, it um, it was templated, and uh, what it does it it authenticates with Google Cloud. Um, then it create builds a container image, pushes that container image into the container registry, and um, then notifies Humanitech that the um, the a new container image is available. Um, so all of this is using secrets that are organization specific secrets. Those are configured at organization level. Um, and um, now, and then what happened? And when we pushed the this code into the repository, it executed the workflow um, and pushed the image into the registry, which then kicked off our um, kicked off our deployment. And it deployed the service, and so now the service is running on um, on is available uh, and it's running on development environment. This is the this is um, um, this is the the entire process um, of deploying. When you have a Humanitech platform orchestrator taking care of all deployments, um, this is uh, we navigated to the to the applications for for this service that was uh, configured automatically. Um, this configuration is created uh, from a um, configuration Humanitech is created from this Humanitech apps YAML file. Um, so this is um, a templated file generated from YAML template um, as part of our backstage scaffold template. And this uh, file has in it um, the, a, declarative, a declaration of the configuration of the workload and the resources necessary to deploy this workload. Um, it also has a workload profile. So these are, would be a, a profile that's configured for your organ for your organization, and it would uh, apply to all the workloads that are generated. Um, but you can specify 
as as a part of the template, you can specify the um, the workload that is being the, the workload template that is being used. The same can be done for infrastructure pro pro profiles, um, and we can also declare automations that are used. So this this automation here is um, going to automatically upload uh, automatically deploy images that are pushed into the container registry. So this declaration is ultimately going to be replaced by something like this. This uh, cause is going to be cloud, cloud, cloud agnostic workload specification. But in the meantime, um, the backstage plugin that we created uh, is able to use this file to um, automatically configure the Humanitech platform orchestrator um, to uh, as part of the uh, templating process in backstage. And that's how easy it can be. Now we, we have our integration with Backstage. This is updating live as a service is available. So if we go in and create a new environment, you can see we create a new environment. And now this is going to show up here in Backstage. There we go. It not, nothing's been deployed here. We can deploy um, from Humanitech. That's it. Um, this is how easy it can be when you have uh, a dynamic control developer platform. Thank you very much. Um, all the resources will be available, um, including the, the Humanitech plugin, um, for those who are interested in giving it a try. Um, my name again is Taras Minkowski, and I'm the CEO of a company called Frontside. Uh, we help companies improve developer experience of the internal developer platforms. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.